Hey everyone, it's Elisa with another step two question for you. Go ahead and pause this, answer it on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. A 46 year old man comes to the physician for the evaluation of a six month history of fatigue and profuse, watery, odorless diarrhea. He reports that he has had a 20 pound weight loss during this time. Physical exam shows conjunctival pallor and mildly delayed capillary refill. Vitals are significant for a heart rate of 110. Lab results are significant for fasting glucose of 132, a potassium of 2.3, and a calcium of 12.1. On CT, there is a well-defined enhancing mass of about 3 by 3 by 3 in the pancreatic tail. Additional evaluation would most likely show which of the following, and our answers are tricuspid insufficiency, peptic ulcers, hyperinsulinemia, cholelithiasis, achlorhydria, necrolytic migratory erythema, or episodic hypertension. That's quite a few options. Let's look at our patient. So our patient is a male with a six month history of fatigue and watery diarrhea. He has a 20 pound weight loss. He has signs of dehydration via tachycardia and delayed capillary refill and possible anemia due to fatigue and conjunctival pallor symptoms. His fasting glucose is high, it's over 132. Let's review our diabetic diagnostic criteria. Those are a hemoglobin A1C of greater than or equal to 6.5, two separate plasma fasting glucoses of over 126, a two hour oral glucose tolerance test of greater than or equal to 200, and a random glucose greater than or equal to 200 with the classic symptoms of diabetes. So he only has one finding, but it's consistent with um, an elevated fasting plasma glucose. His potassium is low, his calcium is high. Now, anytime you see a youngish non-smoker with a pancreas issue and a high calcium mentioned, you should think MEN syndrome. Now, like, Many of us, I think we could all use a refresher on MEN. So let's go over the MEN syndromes. There's three of them that we should know for our board exams. MEN1 is altered mentin protein synthesis. And I remember it as the three Ps, pit, para, and pan. That's because 90% present with a parathyroid adenoma. Um, and this presents as primary hyperparathyroidism and elevated calcium. Uh, you also have pituitary adenomas, the most common is a prolactinoma, as well as a pancreatic tumor, excuse me. Gastronoma is the most common, but you can have any pancreatic tumors. Uh, the MEN 2A and 2B have both in common uh, a RET proto-oncogene, which causes elevated tyrosine kinase activity. They both have, present with medullary thyroid cancer, as well as pheochromocytomas. Um, MEN2A, I remember as 1M and 2Ps, you have a parathyroid adenoma, just like MEN1, as well as these two. So that's your 1P, 2P, and then 1M. And then MEN2B, I remember as 2Ms and 1P. So you have mucosal neuromas slash morphinoid habitus, and then medullary thyroid cancer, and then pheochromocytoma. So... There's also this handy dandy graphic courtesy of AMBOSS um, if you prefer a more visual and nice picturesque table. Go ahead and pause this and read it. Um, and then let's get into analyzing these answer choices. Now, the first answer is tricuspid insufficiency, which is seen in carcinoid syndrome, which is caused by carcinoid tumors. And you can see carcinoid tumors right here for AMBOSS, in 10 to 15% of patients with MEN1. You can also have profuse watery diarrhea in carcinoid syndrome. However, carcinoid tumors are not likely to be found in the pancreatic tail. They're found in the appendix and the bronchi and the terminal ileum, but not really in the pancreas. Also, there is other features of carcinoid syndrome that you should know, such as flushing and wheezing, which are not present in this patient. So it's likely not tricuspid insufficiency. Peptic ulcers are seen in patients with a gastronoma, which 
as we just went over, is the most common tumor um, in someone with a pancreatic mass due to MEN1. High levels of gastrin cause increased gastric acid secretions, which cause uh, ulcers. But you will also see um, no effect on blood glucose levels with gastrinomas, unlike in this patient. Um, however, you could get diarrhea and anemia from the peptic ulcer bleeding. So some of these things match up with our patient and some don't. Let's keep going on. Hyperinsulinemia can be seen with insulinomas, which is a pancreatic tumor, um, and it can occur as part of MEN1. However, we see hyperglycemia in our patient. Patients with insulinomas would have hypoglycemia. You would also see the classic Whipple's triad. Cholelithiasis can be associated with somatostatinomas, which would also arise in the pancreas and can present with weight loss, diarrhea, and glucose intolerance. However, diarrhea in the somatostatinoma, somatostatinoma, mouthful, uh, is caused by fat malabsorption. So you would see foul-smelling stools, not watery stools. Eclerhydria is seen in VIPomas. VIPomas are solitary tumors classically found in the pancreatic table. Table. VIPomas can occur sporadically or as part of MEN1. VIPoma is caused by the excessive secretion of VIP, which is vasoactive intestinal peptide. Uh, and this results in excess fluid and electrolyte secretion into the lumen, leading to a secretory diarrhea and hypokalemia, which is consistent with our patient. VAP also inhibits gastric acid secretion, leading to achlorhydria. And reduced gastric acid can lead to iron and vitamin B12 malabsorption, which can cause anemia, as seen in our patient. The hyperglycemia noted in patient with the syndrome is secondary to a mechanism involving enhanced glycogenolysis due to high portal vein VIP signaling to the liver. We don't need to know this mechanism, we just need to know that um, you can see hyperglycemia with a VIPoma. All of these are consistent with what our patient has. Now, necrolytic migratory erythema is a favorite buzzword of uh, U world and all of the exams, and it's associated with the glucagonoma. Those also present with diarrhea, weight loss, hyperglycemia, as well as neuropsychiatric symptoms. It's a very um, classic constellation of symptoms um, that you should recognize and know that's a glucagonoma. But these, the minor symptoms does not, our, sorry, excuse me, our patient does not have the symptoms of. Um, you know, dermatological findings, nor neuropsychiatric symptoms. Episodic hypertension is associated with pheochromocytomas. Hyperglycemia and hypokalemia can occur in patients due to the effect of catecholamines. However, this tumor arises in the adrenal medulla, not in the pancreatic tail. You would also have complaints of headache, uh, headaches, diaphoresis, and palpitations, and usually you don't see uh, diarrhea. Now, I didn't mention this, uh, but based on the fact that this patient had a pancreatic mass and high calcium, you should have already categorized him into the category of MEN1 syndrome. Um, just by knowing that, you could have excluded anything that MEN2 presented with. If there was an option for mucosal neuromas and marfanism, you could have crossed that out because that's meant to be. Uh, this biochromocytoma and episodic hypertension is also meant to be and to a and then there's medullary carcinoma, which would present with high calcium similar to hyperparathyroidism, but if they mention anything about a thyroid tumor um, in the answer choices, you could pretty much exclude that. So our answer is achlorhydria, watery diarrhea, hypokalemia, and a pancreatic mask are classic for a VIPoma. And then the hypercalcemia is likely from the hyperparathyroidism because he has MEN1. I hope you enjoyed this question. I hope it was helpful and tune in next week for more.